Hello and welcome to today's glitch text effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and I guarantee you're going to learn something new today. So check this out. This is the glitch design you're going to learn how to create. When you're done, you're going to know how to add a floating selection to an existing layer in one click, how to create a vignette, how to increase the kerning and discover what kerning is and more. So are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome, let's do it. Let's create our document for our new project by going up to file and selecting new. For the width, I'm going to set it to 1920, the height 1080. Under advanced options, set the resolution to 300, then come down here to where it says fill width and select foreground color. And we need to make sure that the foreground color is set to black. Let's grab our text tool now so we can add some content. For the font, I'm going to use a free font called Oswald and I'm going to choose the bold option. If you want to download and use the same font, check out the link in the description below. I'm going to resize this to 400 and I'm going to set the color to, I don't want pure white. I'm going to go off white. So I'm going to choose maybe something like that. In all caps, I'm going to type out glitch. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to add some spacing in between the letters, and that's known as kerning in the graphic design world. So to fix that, we need to first select all the content, and we can do that by double clicking. And now we can come up to this box right here and increase the spacing with these arrow keys, or we can type in a number in this box. I'm going to do that by typing in 12 and then press your tab key to update the spacing in between. That's what I want. So let's go ahead and grab our move tool and move it into the center. Actually, let's use our alignment tool to place it directly in the center. So you can either go up to your toolbar here and select it from here or use your keyboard shortcut. Either way, once you have that selected, you need to tell GIMP which layer needs to be aligned. So to do that, we need to click on the inside of this layer boundary to activate that layer. Now we can come over to the tool options and select relative to first item, and then you can align to the horizontal centers with this icon and then vertical centers. All right, now let's go ahead and duplicate this layer by clicking on this icon right here. Let's grab our text tool again with the letter T double click because we want to select these again because we are going to change the color. So choose a paint color. I'm going to use this color right here. If you want to use the exact same color, just type in this information in this box. Let's duplicate it one more time and change the color to a blue color. All right, so we're starting to add a lot of layers here. Let's get organized and rename these layers so we know which layer is which. I'm going to double click on the layer name and rename this one blue. This will be pink. And this is our white. I also want the white layer on top so that the white is, is more visible versus the other two colors. So click right here twice. Next, let's grab our move tool because we need to move the blue and the pink so that we can actually see those colors. Now, before you begin moving them, make sure you have move the active layer selected in the tool options. Otherwise, you won't be able to move it because if you select blue and have the other option selected, it's going to move the white layer. So select blue, move the active layer, and then click and drag it to the right. Let's grab the pink layer and move that one to the left. All right, let's go ahead and group these layers together now by right clicking on the glitch white layer and selecting new layer group. To add them into the layer group, click on a layer and drag it over that layer group name. And then once you see that highlight, you can release and it will be added inside. For the next one, just click and drag underneath the other one and the same with the last one. 
So we now have all of these organized and I'm going to call this original. And the reason why we're doing this is so we can work non-destructively. If we need to go back and make adjustments, instead of starting from scratch, we can come back to this original content here because we're going to apply some additional effects to our text now in a new layer. So first we need to duplicate this layer, right click on it and select merge layer group. We can then turn off the original and we're left with all three of those layers merged together. What I want to do next is tilt the text. So let's grab our shear tool from our toolbar here or use the keyboard shortcut, which is shift plus H. Just click and drag to the right to add that tilt. Once you're happy with the edit, go ahead and click enter or return. Now we have one problem here. If we zoom in, it looks like the letter H was cut off right here. And that's due to the layer boundary. The layer boundary is confining my edit inside of that boundary. So I'm going to undo that so I can increase the layer boundary size so it's not confining my edit to the size that it is now. So let's go up to edit and choose undo shear. Then go to layer and select layer to image size. And then you can go ahead and redo that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag here. And now because that layer boundary is larger, it's not being confined or cropped off right here. Click enter or return to commit to that edit. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in with my zoom tool one time. And you can grab the zoom tool with your keyboard shortcut, which is the letter Z. Now we're going to begin creating the glitch effect. So to do that, we're going to grab our rectangle tool and we're going to make a small selection, something like this. Then we're going to right click, go down to select and choose float. Take notice of our keyboard shortcut here because you may want to use this because we need to do this several more times. Click right there and that adds that selection to a floating selection, which is going to allow us to move it in either direction. Now we can grab our move tool, click on it, and then drag it to the right or left. So I'm going to move it over right about there. And now we need to add this floating selection back into the layer. And we do that by clicking on this anchor icon right here. And now it's added to this layer. So what I want to do next is I want to continue repeating this step and alternating the direction left and right. And I want to alternate the size so there's not a pattern in the effect. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time. I'm going to select my rectangle select tool and the keyboard shortcut for that is the letter R. I'm going to make another selection down here a little bit larger. Right click, select, float. Grab your move tool with the letter M and then move it in the opposite direction. Click on the anchor icon. I'm going to go ahead and do this a few more times. Now that you know how to do it, I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part of the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this in slow motion. Now that I have my glitch effect done, we're going to go ahead and add the image that I provided and then we'll style the project a little bit more and we'll be all done. So go ahead and locate the file that you downloaded, click on it and drag it to your GIMP interface. Once you release, it's going to be added as a new layer in your canvas at the very top. And we're going to move this down below our original copy right here. I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Let's call it glitch effect. Let's grab our glitch image here and let's change the blending mode to lighten only. And let's drop the opacity down to around 20 to 25. I'm going to do 20. Next, we're going to add a layer mask to that layer. Make sure it's filled with white. Click add. And we're going to fade out that image a little bit around the edges to kind of give it a vignette and to kind of tone it down just a little bit. I think I want to actually drop the opacity a little more. So right there should be good. Let's grab our gradient tool. And then under your gradient panel here, 
make sure you have foreground to background RGB selected. If you're not seeing this panel, come up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Gradients from here. We also want to check out our options here in the Tool Options and make sure we have Radio selected. I'm going to go back to my Layers panel here. Make sure you have your Layer Mask selected. Now we can come over here to the center of our canvas and click and drag out to get our vignette. You can also change the gradient feathering to be more of a harder edge versus a softer edge by coming to the center point right here and clicking on the circle and dragging it to the right. And that's going to lower the feathering. So I now have a much harder edge versus the feathered edge that I had here. I can also make that feathering much larger by going up the line this way. I like it in the center, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right there. Go ahead and click enter or return to add your gradient. Now before we go, I have one more quick tip for you. If you want to place that gradient directly in the center or have it starting directly in the center, we need to add a couple of guides. So let's do that. Let's go up to image and scroll down here to guides and select new guide by percent. By default, we have horizontal selected first and we have 50 for the position, which is what we want. Go ahead and click OK and it should add a guide. I have mine turned off, so I need to go up to view and select show guides. We need to go back now and add one for the vertical. And now I know exactly where dead center is and I can click and drag out a new gradient and it's going to replace the one I created earlier.